This is One on One. Hi, I'm Steve Adubato. I want to introduce for the first time Dr. Keith uh, Kensler joins us on One on One. He is the Surgeon in Chief, Joseph M. Sanzari Children's Hospital, Hackensack University Medical Center. Good to see you, Doctor. Nice to be um, here. Thank you. We're talking about uh, pediatric surgery versus adult surgery. One of the biggest, or some of the biggest challenges or differences between pediatric surgery versus uh, surgery on an adult would be? Uh, there are many. I mean, obvious, the obvious ones are anatomy is smaller, uh, the physiology is different, and the emotional state of the patient is different, and there's always a family attached, so you have to communicate with many members of the family rather than speaking directly to the patient sometimes. Yeah, it's so interesting. You think about this. I mean, with an adult, you sit with an adult, and there are certain procedures. There are risks involved, and there's the upside, and, and you go through the, all these things, and you talk, and you talk it through. With a child, you're not doing that. You're talking to the whole family. Right. How do you train a physician to do that? I think medical schools are starting to attempt to train physicians to do that, but when I went to medical school, there was no formal training in that, so it was kind of what you brought to the table, and I think in some way that was what drew me to pediatric surgery, and it may sort of drive a doctor one way or the other. Well, what drew you? You said it drew you to pediatric surgery. What do you mean? Uh, well, p a big part of pediatric surgery is talking to families and dealing with uh, obviously nervous parents and uh, either you enjoy that or you don't. There's a big difference even with smaller cases that are very routine. They become big worries for, for parents naturally and so if you enjoy that kind of thing th that's one of the things that draws you to pediatric surgery I think. You know so I I'm thinking about this. Um, recently I was going through some shoulder surgery and there have been di different surgeries and, and I was talking to some people about it, and we were talking about bedside manner. And someone says, well, you know, when it comes to surgery, who cares what the surgeon's bedside manner is, as long as he or she is a great surgeon, and you get the operation done, and you get the outcome you want, and that's that. My sense is that's not the same when it comes to pediatric surgery, because, am I, am I missing something here? I think that's definitely true in part, but there is, something to be said for you want both. where the right where the where the surgeon trained and his skill set is very important his or her Go ahead. his or her um, however um, there's a lot of it that has to do with the entire family and i think that having a team approach you need the parents to be on your team so in order for, them, for their expectations to be managed and to have them yeah. understand what's about to happen you need to really team up with them right from the start so that's uh, something that some of us are better than others at, I think. Let's talk about the minimally invasive surgery with um, children. What specifically are we talking about? What sort of minimally invasive surgeries are the most prevalent ones that are helping children today? So at, at this point, almost every operation can be done minimally invasively. And what we mean is what uh, we're talking about laparoscopic surgery and thoracoscopic surgery or keyhole mean? surgery. Keyhole. You know, the, the narrowest incision you, one can make to gain access to the abdomen or the chest and do an operation on the inside of the patient rather than to open an incision to put the surgeon's hands within. So that was impossible for little, uh, littler children, toddlers and infants, uh, especially newborns and even premature infants. Those were impossible to do when the instruments were large and made for adults. So. At this point, they had to get smaller. They went from 10 millimeters to five, and now two and three uh, millimeters in diameter. In so they're getting point. narrower? Narrower and shorter. And that allows you to do a whole range of things you here to, that heard it here before you couldn't do? That's right. Talk about the outcomes and how they're different through by using these minimally invasive technologies. So, sure. It's hard, it's hard to gauge that because in the last 10 years, it's really exploded. So the long-term outcomes are hard to say. Obviously, with smaller incisions, there's less tissue trauma. There's a lot less pain. Patients can ambulate and avoid uh, staying in bed for long periods of time, and they can participate in their recovery a lot faster. Patients go home a lot faster. So I think those are the tangible things that are, that are obvious right now. Our, our goals as minimally invasive surgeons or minimally invasive pediatric surgeons is always to accomplish the same operation 
that you would open or better. So that, that's our goal. But that's not always possible. I mean, it, depending upon the individual case, depending upon the challenge that, that the child is facing, sometimes the other more invasive, if I can call it that, surgery is required. Correct. That's right. And, and each case is different, of course, but with a big solid tumor, for example, there's really no way to fit that out of the body. And in times, there, there are at times difficult locations, and the safest thing to do is to do that through an open, larger incision, mm -hmm. and you have to remove a mass that's not compressible. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, uh, taking out a lobe of the lung for a, for a benign lesion, right. we can make very small incisions, remove the lung on the inside, and then mince it up into small pieces in order right. to remove it piecemeal. And finally, the training for you and your colleagues to use this equipment, minimally invasive equipment, is? Uh, is pediatric surgery fellowship and a lot of practice in inanimate labs and, and on animals and, uh, and then people. And the reaction from your colleagues has been? Excellent. Yeah, everyone's... They're into this. They want this. Absolutely. And more and more, it's interesting because I always think of the older physicians and surgeons who have not done this and then are, they say, well, here it is. They're responding well? They are. And I think that's the key. I'm in a group with older and younger surgeons, and I think uh, I'm sort of in the middle. Um, it's really helpful to have an open, older surgeon in a case that you're doing minimally invasively to offer other perspective on that, mm. and vice versa. Sometimes they have a big case they don't think is mm. doable minimally invasively, and with our help, we can accomplish it. So it's nice to have a team with everybody represented. Dr. Kensler, we appreciate you coming in and sharing. It's a very important topic. Thanks for having me. Thank you. This is One on One. I'm Steve Adubato. Stay tuned. We'll be right back right after this. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Fedway Associates, Inc., the Russell Berry Foundation, Cone Resnick, New Jersey Natural Gas, Verizon Communications, and by the law firm of Gibbons PC. Promotional support provided by the Star Ledger and NJ.com. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine. One on One with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System.